On the build show today, we're talking about insulated concrete forms. What are the benefits? How's the system work? What's it cost? Why would you use this over traditional construction methods? And even what are some of the downsides? Let's get going. On the build show today, we're gonna dive deep into ICF construction. That's insulated concrete forms. Now today's video is not sponsored by an ICF manufacturer, but there's a bunch of players in the marketplace. I've actually done some Baltex ICF before on my job sites. There's Anvic, BuildBlocks, several others. I don't even know all the names because there's so many players. We happen to be on a BuildBlocks job, but today's video is not sponsored by them. Now what is ICF? All the manufacturers have a slightly different system, but basically it's a foam Lego block that gets filled with concrete in the center. That's the short way of saying it. If you look at this foundation behind me, what you see is we've got a concrete footer, and then the blocks are laid up on top of that. They're very lightweight. It's very owner builder friendly. And in fact, this owner, one of the big reasons why they chose ICF was because they wanted to provide the labor themselves. We're gonna get into the cost in a minute, but what you see here is those blocks are laid up just like a Lego set. They're hollow in the center, so you're gonna lay a grid work of rebar as you lay those up, and then you're gonna pour concrete into those cells. So in effect, you've got a sandwich with EPS foam, concrete, and EPS foam. Okay, so if you were doing ICF for just the foundation, this is what it would look like. You'd have the basement walls. This is a 10-foot wall right here, and you would pour it up to here, and this would actually flush out with concrete so that your mud sill would sit on top of this and then you'd go wood frame above. But in fact, this is the front entry porch for the house and we're going two, story, two stories with ICF. So here's what we're doing here. We've got this block that's L-shaped right here and then we've got a series of rebar coming up and then actually we're gonna have a poured concrete deck that's gonna integrate here. That's one of the intricacies of ICF is you need to figure out how you're gonna attach your floor system. And this owner decided to do a uh, build blocks system. I'll put a link in the description below. Uh, kind of a cool system where they've got a poured concrete floor integrating in here and then they're going up from there. But this is a great place to kind of see how it works. You've got concrete filling this cell. So you've got approximately a six inch continuous concrete wall, no breaks in there. You've got a series of rebar that's laid in and you can see there's some cages in there. Uh, to actually fit the rebar in. and you've got a horizontal and vertical grid. Now he's got a mixture in here. He's got number four and number five bar. If you're, if you're familiar with rebar spacing, a number four bar means four eighths. So this is basically a half inch bar. And these verticals you see that are a little thicker, this is a number five bar or five eighths of an, of an inch uh, rebar. This is in a grid network. So when the concrete's poured, this is a super strong wall. And the form boards, which is this two, I think it's two and a half inch uh, EPS foam on the inside and the outside, which holds the concrete in place, stays. And so now, in effect, you've got a continuous insulation on the outside of the building and a continuous insulation on the inside of the building. Now, one of the questions that you always get when you start thinking about ICF is how do I attach to it? Now, BuildBlocks has a pretty interesting system and similar to a lot of manufacturers. They've got a uh, inner core here made of plastic. I believe this is polypropylene. And inside this block right here, there, there's actually a grid network. And if you look on the block itself, let's see if I can uh, scoot down here and show you. They've got this grid tied network here that anywhere you place a screw along here, you're gonna have polypropylene that you're gonna be able to screw into. And then you've got these special, what they call hard points. Everywhere you see this BB on the block right there, that's gonna be an especially hard point. And hopefully I got the numbers right, but anywhere you screw in, basically you've got 150 pounds of screw hold. And where you've got the BB, you've got like 400 some pounds of screw hold at that location. Now I actually tested this yesterday because I was curious how much it would hold and what it was like to screw a screw into there. So I made two two by four blocks, cut them on an angle on the table saw so I could grip them. And I'll tell you what, I didn't put those in a, hard points, I put those just into the grid and I was able to hang on those no problem, no movement, which means that hanging sheetrock on the inside, hanging furring strips and some hardy plank siding or attaching other materials, you're not gonna have any problems. This is a very uh, rigid screw hold. Next, let's talk about the how. How's the process work? So basically first, we're gonna be pouring a footer 
for the entire building, and that's this right here. This footer is going to be the base plate for the house. And then once the footer is poured, there's going to be a keyway with rebar that sticks up, and these foam blocks lay on top of that. Now, one of the beauties of these blocks is, look at this, super lightweight, and they snap together and hold together. Very cool, and, and because they're so lightweight, this tends to be very owner builder friendly. So if you're thinking about building your house and you wanna do the labor, I think this is a very interesting system because of this extreme lightness. Now, once these blocks go up, the biggest thing that you need to do, and or one of the most critical things I should say, is internal bracing. Now, one of the things I like about this system in particular is they can be braced fully on the inside. As you can see here, we're on the uh, kind of uphill side of this walkout foundation on this house. So at this portion of the foundation, we're gonna end up being underground by seven or eight feet. And having to brace in here would be really hard. So one cool thing about this system, and I'm not sure if this is unique to build blocks or if other ICF guys do this as well, but they can brace just on one side. So those braces on the inside, they're gonna be secured to the ground. And then because we've got these uh, channels of polypropylene we can screw into. They're gonna put that U-shaped brace on there, and then they're gonna use a screw tightener to get this vertical wall plumb. Now this is something that's critical for an ICF foundation. We've gotta make sure that our footer is totally dead level because that's our base to put these blocks on. And then once we do that, we need to absolutely make sure that this wall ends up plumb. Now I understand that some ICF people, and I don't have this from personal experience, uh, but as kind of reading on this topic, some people actually tow in just a little bit, meaning that this, this wall itself, when it's framed, might actually tilt inward towards those braces by something like a half inch or so. Because on poor day, the last thing you want is this wall to be out of plumb and you're having to pull it back plumb. And the other thing we wanna make sure is that we've got a perfectly plumb and level surface. If this thing gets poured and it's out, it's a bear and trying to fix that later or make it look right later is really a problem. And the other thing we need to be really cautious on is blowouts. So do your bracing correctly and do your research when it comes to that if you're thinking about doing ICF. Okay, why choose ICF? I think there's three main reasons. Disaster resiliency, energy efficiency, and sound. Let's start with energy efficiency. Now these walls yield an R22 when it's all completed. Remember, we've got two and a half inches of foam, we've got a continuous concrete wall, then we've got another two and a half inches of foam. Now, R22 on the surface doesn't sound like a lot. I can get an R22 out of a two by six wall framed traditionally, but what's the difference? The difference is I've got that foam continuous all the way around the outside of the house. There's no thermal breaks. Every time I put a stud in the house and then insulate in between those, I've got a huge thermal break. That stud only has a, a couple of R values, maybe an R value of three or four, whereas this is gonna have that continuous insulation all the way around. The other thing is we've got this massive concrete in between the wall there. Here's one of our blocks. So remember, we've got this insulation on the outside. It's totally continuous. We've got this continuous concrete wall, and then we've got another layer of foam on the inside so that R value doesn't totally tell the story. If you go to the Build Blocks website, who happens to be this manufacturer, they say that it's more like an effective R40. Now you have to take that with a grain of salt, but I think there is something to this. You've got this thermal mass right here with this concrete that once it gets the temperature, it doesn't want to change. In a hot climate, think about that, the sun is heating up the outside and this concrete mass here wants to stay the same temperature. We don't, it's going to resist that heat flowing into the building. Similarly, in a cold climate, it's gonna resist the heat loss through the building because we've got that massive concrete wall. Now, as we're talking about that concrete wall, I think that's one of the big selling points for me on ICF is in effect, we've got a concrete house, a very insulated, very airtight, but concrete house and the disaster resiliency. I think this is really a reason why people chose it. And in fact, that's why this homeowner chose it. They wanted to make sure that when that tornado came, when that storm comes, when the winds start whipping up, they're not gonna have an issue with the house moving. And with a six inch concrete wall like this with rebar in it, I can tell you this house is not going anywhere. ICF houses really should be in the hundreds of years when it comes to how long you, you would expect a house 
to live when it comes to this type of construction. That concrete wall is massive. It's not going anywhere. Okay, so what are the situations where then ICF works if we're talking about disaster resiliency? I think if you're building coastal where you've got storm surge, you've got other big issues with coastal environments, that's a great place for an ICF wall. I think also if you're in a tornado alley, for sure, this is a great system to use. A tornado is not gonna affect this. You're gonna have to really anchor your roof down, but these walls are not going anywhere. I think also fire zones is an interesting topic. Um, this EPS foam that's on the outside has a 15 minute fire rating. There's a retardant on here, but generally speaking, this foam is not UV resistant. We gotta cover this, and we're gonna cover this with masonry. We've got a brick ledge right here. This homeowner is going to do basically a stone or a stucco facade on the whole outside. So then we're going to have really good fire resistance. The other thing that I think is interesting as we're talking about that resiliency is because you've got the, those polypropylene studs, let's call them, inside here that can hold just as much holding power for uh, when it comes to a screw as a 2 by 4 would. If I had a flood, let's say, in this house and we had hung sheetrock to the inside, when that flood waters receded, we could pull that sheetrock. The EPS foam is not going to absorb any water. The concrete's going to be totally fine. There's really nothing to dry out. It's not going to go anywhere. This house is going to be solid. And we could remodel this really, really easily after a storm or a flood situation. So I think that's a big benefit of this as well. The last thing I want to mention was sound. You know, that's one thing I hadn't honestly thought about until I came to this job site. They tell me the STC rating on this wall is actually a 54, that's really high. That means that if someone's yelling on the inside of this wall, I'm not gonna hear that on the outside. And it's not as much the EPS that's doing that, it's really that six inch continuous concrete wall. You're not gonna hear a thing through that. What about cost? I got some basic numbers from the guys at Build Blocks, and here's what this is breaking down to. For each wall square foot, it's about $5 in materials. And then for the labor to install those blocks, to basically put the Legos together and to pour it, another $5 a square foot. So we're talking about $10 in materials and labor. But then we need to add in the cost of concrete, which of course is very, is varies quite a bit. Right now where I am in Texas, we're about 120 some dollars per yard of concrete, which means that we're about another $5 per square foot for concrete costs. So all in, we're about $15 per square foot. Now remember, again, that's wall square footage and not floor square footage. So for this particular house, to give you a few numbers, this house that you're seeing here is about a 3,000 square foot basement and about 4,200 square feet above. So we're about 7,000 square feet, but the wall square footage I'm told is about 9,000 square feet on this house. So you can do your, the math yourself. The one interesting point on this house is that our owner over here is a younger couple. They're about my age. They've got two kids. And one of the big reasons why they chose this is because they could do the labor themselves. And in fact, they were able to buy the build blocks directly from the manufacturer. Not everybody lets you do that in the ICF world. So in effect, they're going to end up saving about $5 a square foot, bringing the cost of these walls down to maybe $10 a foot installed. Very cool. The other big reason these clients did it on this site is because the power company was going to charge them 40 grand to bring in a power line for this house. And that kind of got them on this road of, gosh, if I'm going to build an, an off grid house rather than spending 40 grand on electricity, I could spend $5,000 on a battery bank, another maybe 10 or 15 on a solar array. And for half the cost, I could have a house that doesn't even need a connection to the grid. And then the fact that they could build it themselves. This is a really interesting project. Okay, lastly, let's talk downsides. You know, when you get into the ICF world and you look uh, at online reviews or you get onto sites like Green Building Advisor and you start talking ICF, there are some people talking about ICF that it's basically a religion, that they are trying to convert you and they think ICF is the only way to go and you're an idiot not to build with ICF. But what are the downsides? What are the things that you may wanna think twice about before using a system like this? I think there's several. Cost certainly plays a factor. It is uh, more expensive than a traditional system. I think low R value ultimately is a bit of a detractor as well. Um, we're outside of Georgia, so I think this wall is gonna perform incredibly well here. But the same wall in a really cold climate in climate zone five or six, let's say if you're building in Minnesota, 
I'd tell you that I'd want to see more uh, exterior insulation on this. I'd want to see a, a block that you could add a couple of extra inches of EPS on the outside of the building to, to yield a higher R value because I can build a much higher R value ultimately than this at a lower cost. Disaster resistance though, I mean that one's hard to, that's hard to, uh, to say a downside on. I think this building could get hit with serious storms, crazy events, earthquake, fire, and it's not going anywhere. That's, that's a big one on this project. Another downside though you need to think about is remodeling and additions. You know, you think about this big box right here. We've got these window openings uh, that were formed and then poured. If I wanted to punch another opening in this and add a window here, oh man, that is not an easy job. Even just breaking out the concrete saw and getting an opening and then waterproofing it. Anytime you think about remodeling or additions with ICF, it's gonna be a bear. So you better have a plan that you like and that you don't mind sitting there for the next couple hundred years on your property because this would be a really hard house to remodel. The next downside I wanna mention is making sure that your walls are perfectly plumb and level. I mentioned that earlier in the video, but honestly, I think that is a downside to this system, especially if you're an owner builder, you're trying to do this yourself, you better brace the heck out of your building and really ensure that on pour day, you've got everything ready to go. Because once these walls are poured, if they're out of plumb, you've got a nightmare in your hands. It's a real pain. And I know lots of builders that have done an ICF project and don't continue with it. And it's because of some of those downsides. But the last downside that I wanna mention, which also is a critical one that I don't see talked about a whole lot on review sites is waterproofing. And I think that's because you've got a lot of first timers building. They haven't done this before. They don't know how critical the waterproofing is on a project like this. You basically have miles of cracks when you've got an ICF project because those Lego blocks are coming together. And you think that because you've got a concrete wall there, you're not gonna have any problems with waterproofing. But in fact, there's lots of areas that it's tricky to waterproof and especially openings too. Think about all these window openings and how do we waterproof that when we've basically got a foam block with a buried polypropylene stud in there. Not super easy to waterproof. Guys, thanks for joining me on this video. I know there's a lot more that could be said about ICF. Hopefully we'll do another video series in the future about this, but stay tuned for our next episode. We're, we're actually gonna be talking about the waterproofing, as I mentioned earlier, and we're gonna be talking specifically about this system from our friends at Polywall. And then we're also gonna do a video on the drainage system that we're doing for this house. And I think it's interesting in that the waterproofing we're doing here and the drainage we're doing here would also work for a standard concrete foundation. So I think those are gonna to appeal to you whether you're building ICF or not. Guys, follow us on Twitter or Instagram. Hit that subscribe button below. We've got new videos every Tuesday and every Friday. Otherwise, I'll see you next time on The Build Show.